Hi, this is Miss Ramos, and I am with a, a student, an ex-student of mine, and I just want to know, can I ask you a question? Yes, I'm and, all ears for you. Yes, and my question to you is that, um, what is your relationship that me and you have from the time you was a student to the time you graduated? Well, um, when I was a student, I kind of felt protected with you as a teacher because with a lot of things going on as a teenager and what teenagers experience, it was really hard for me as a high school student. And so when I had you, who was a positive person who would help me emotionally, it kind of made me a better person. You made me focus on my goals. You gave me better aspirations. Um, my mindset changed because listening to other students who don't know much coming from an adult who's well experienced, it changed my whole entire life and my whole perspective. So having you as a teacher um, in high school was a great thing for me, when I, especially transitioning to college. And then when I became an alumni, you, that's when you helped me spiritually. And I thank God for you every day because if I didn't meet you spiritually, I don't know where I would be. So you were, I mean, and you still are a great example over my life. And I will continue to pray for you. Do you remember the time when we was in class and you came to me and said, Miss Ramos, pray for me. And I said, I couldn't pray for you because it was against the rules and regulations. And you took your hand and put it on, took my hands and put on top of your head and said, pray for me. Do you remember that? Is yeah. That <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, because I felt, a, well, I saw a light in you. And especially when we're confused as teenagers, remember, I believe the enemy is always trying to get us while we're young. And because you were the light, I wanted you to share some of that with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me ask you, what do you think about God? Well, I think, well, it's not what I think, it's what I know. Mm -hmm. And I know that God is a very great friend of mine. Because mm -hmm. the thing about God is, if we don't have a relationship with him... Okay. He is eternal, and man is very temporary. And his mindset stays the same about us, regardless about what people say about us. And I love God because he's consistent, he's loving, he's compassionate, he's patient, he's kind, mm -hmm. he's forgiving. And he shares these characteristics with us because without him sharing these qualities, the fruit of the Spirit... We wouldn't be able to know what love is. We wouldn't be able to love what, know what patience is and all the good stuff that keeps us going to, through this life. Yes. And uh, if I could also ask you, what is your experience with Jesus? My experience with Jesus is an amazing experience. Because of Jesus, I'm able to control the enemy. And because of Jesus... They used, you, you're used to people saying that, oh, it's life. But meeting Jesus and having this relationship with Jesus allows you to understand that it's not just life, that you have control over your life and you're able to put the devil in his place with his demons and all those other things. So I'm very grateful for my relationship with Jesus because I'm able to plead the blood. I'm able to understand what grace is all about. I'm able to understand what mercy is all about. I'm able to understand more than what the world will ever understand because I'm not in this world, but I'm of a kingdom. That's amazing. What does beauty within means to you? Beauty within means to me is cleansing, meaning as if, if the inside of you is not pure, then the outside of you won't be pure because the Bible says that um, what's inside of a man's heart that's what he is and so if you have Christ inside of you then you are beauty in within that's an amazing answer also I would like to um to ask you what issues did you face when you left high school and you transitioned to college? What was those those things that... Well, I faced uh, confusion. 
deception. Well, first it was deception, mm -hmm. and then it was confusion, and then it was manipulation. All these spirits that was that were going around, and I didn't understand what was going around. I've obviously, after you know speaking to you, you guide me and you help me to allow me to understand that these are what the devil used to play his gimmicks and his games. Mm -hmm. And you allow me to understand that we have full control over it through Jesus. Yeah. So I struggle with a lot of it through people because you know that the enemy, he uses people. He puts people on an assignment. And the mm -hmm. same way God has his people on assignment, mm -hmm. every, both parties have people on, mi on missions. And I had to understand that I... I have a calling and Christ wants me to work for him. Mm -hmm. And since Christ wants me to work for him, the enemy is going to always give me a problem. So I had these problems, these obstacles, and I didn't understand that I had control over them. So that's what I was going with, going through mm -hmm. after um, high school and all that stuff. What is your relationship with church? Well, the church is inside you. Church is inside you. So I can have church anywhere. Like in my car, I can praise. I can talk to God in my car. The same way I can go to a temple, I have church all the time. In my mind, I'm praising. In my mind, I'm thinking about God's word. And my mind is just all about God. So church is everywhere. Okay. What about church, the physical building that you go and you fellowship with people? What is your, what do you feel about that? Well, I feel, okay. I honestly, I just learned this. I learned that church is very important because when you feel the spirit of God around you, especially that, that puts a charge in you. Sometimes you need that help. You need that support. You need that push. You need that charge. And I love church because sometimes I could walk in, in there week and then I could go out being some something else with the pastor feeding you mm -hmm. with the worship getting fire because mm -hmm. the word of God is a fire having a relationship with God is a fire and it's a desire and once I leave out of there with the fire <laughs> I am grateful <laughs> what is your um what is your your prayer life like and your study in the word of God how, how do you go about that oh prayer life well remember when we're learning about God it's the same way like going to school. It's baby steps. We know that God, he doesn't expect us to be a grown up, especially coming to him at the beginning. So when I first came to Christ, drinking the milk, remember? <laughs> when I first came to Christ, it was very difficult for me because we're not learning anything from what the pastors are preaching now and what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I learned that God wants you to put the effort into the relationship it's kind of like um you know you have a friendship with someone and then you're the one that's always calling mm -hmm. and then you're like man i'm putting all the effort in it's the same thing with our relationship with christ you can't expect him to do everything so now you got to make sure you call him mm -hmm. you got to make sure you're hungry for him you're thirsty for him because the enemy is thirsty and hungry for you and so that's why you should always be hungry and thirsty for God so that when it's time for God to come knocking for you, you have your sword, your armor, your, you know, all these other good things that God has supplied us. Because one thing I love about God is that he doesn't allow us to go outside naked. Mm -hmm. And so God gives us this, this, not only he gives us a helmet or he gives us a shield or he gives us a belt or he gives us the word of God, but he supplies us with angels. And so I love my relationship with God and I love my relationship with church because not because for the sake of the blessing and prosperity and all those other good things, but because the enemy can't do what he wants to me. You see how people are dying left and right and all these crazy things. Mm -hmm. That's not for you because you are fully protected. Mm -hmm. And if the enemy has any opportunity to shoot you down, mm -hmm. he can't can't not with you everybody else is dying everybody else is sick but you're just surrounded by that and you can't it can't touch you like i feel like i'm inside of this bubble that I, yeah. no one can touch me so that i think that, i don't know if i answered your question but i think yes that's you it. did what is your favorite bible scripture oh my god I, honestly all of them when you come the thing about it is when you go through a situation uh -huh. and 
you establish a Bible verse that helps you throughout the situation. You're like, oh my God, this is my favorite Bible verse. But that's not necessarily. It's because they all help you in different ways. Like, for example, I remember when I've experienced my first heartbreak, I fell back on Luke 4, verse 18, when Jesus uh, said that he, that this God has anointed him to free the to free the captives and heal the brokenhearted because that's what he came to do and most of most of all we learned that it's not all about what people are saying when we focus on what god is saying Mm because his word is him then we know that we've accomplished everything Mm -hmm. okay what is your favorite bible scripture (laughs) i well okay um honestly I like Ephesians 2 verse 9. I like Ephesians 2 verse 9 that says that by grace you are saved, not by your own effort. Mm -hmm. Because Christ came and did us a favor that if it wasn't for him, there would be no relationship with God. There would be no kingdom inside of me. There would be no, uh, no, you know, dominion taken away from the enemy and back to Christ and he gave it back to us. So he has done us a favor in so many ways that we do not even understand or have even taken advantage of. Okay, thank you. I want to talk about what's going on today with the students. And one of the things that is happening is an increased rate of suicide. What is your take on that? Well, I just think it's um, the enemy taking advantage of how much people he can take out before his time. Um, so what do you think about suicide? How do, how do you define it? Well, suicide, in my definition, is when one takes his or her own life. And that's, I think that's the world definition. But the spiritual definition of that is the enemy making you feel as if you're taking yourself out. But when he's really taking you out. And it all comes with the mind. See, if you, I don't believe in it being neutral. It's either you have a life for Christ or you have a life that you think, oh, I'm an atheist. But that doesn't exist. It's either you're for Christ or you're for the devil. And you don't even know it. And so he makes you think that you have control over your own life when you don't. Because God says in Isaiah 30 verse 1, he says that those who does not take my console, my advice... They sin on top of sin. Meaning that if you don't understand God's plan or obey his words and his command, you're sinning on top of sin. And you're thinking, oh, I'm doing things the right way, but you're not. And I believe suicide, it all starts with the mind. If the enemy makes you think, okay, I may not go to church, but I don't do wrong. That's how he first gets you. That's the first trick. So... If you have this mindset where I'm not going to follow Christ, that's where your spirit dies. Mm -hmm. And then that's where you have this battle that you have no control of because Christ is not here to help you. Because you're not reaching out to him. You're not calling to him. The spirit needs to be with his owner. And so suicide comes from, the, the state of suicide comes from the spirit needing his God. And so, um, the, but the real question is, we, we're thinking we're battling with ourselves, but we're not battling with ourselves because everybody has this battle that they go through. Don't think oh, I'm the only one who thought of suicide because everybody must have thought about it or probably even attempted. But it's the fact that we neglect to handle it the proper way. And we do these things by allowing what the enemy puts in our mind to marinate. This is what is overtaking us. This is what is overpowering us. And I love the second uh, book of Corinthians, chapter 10, because in the second book of Corinthians, we see that Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 through 6, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity 
to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when you when your obedience is fulfilled. Look what the apostle Paul says. He says that he is not we're not battling with flesh. But this war is spiritual. And so our mind is going out of control. We're battling confusion. We're battling manipulation. We're, mad- we're battling disobedient. We're battling deception. And that's where the enemy takes you. Because once you rebel and you disobey God, you're all by yourself with these thoughts. Because you have to understand that you are nothing without God. John 15 verse 5, Jesus said that with me, you are nothing. He didn't sugarcoat it. He said, with me, you are nothing. But with me, you shall bear fruit. Mm -hmm. And so the devil himself uses your mind to make you think that it's you, but it's really him. And so Mm -hmm. he tries his best to shift your atmosphere. He tries tries his best because he comes inside everybody. Believe it or not, I learned this biblically. He comes inside everybody and plays these games and talk in your head and to discourage you and to make you feel shame and he uses your past to play these games what you've done in the past he tries to use that for your results and this is what where the suicide comes in because you don't think you're going to make it because the enemy is constantly lying so jesus says in john 8 verse 44 that satan is a liar and that is his native language and when he lies Think about it. When someone lies to you, what do they do? They have control over you. Mm -hmm. They're able to blind you. They're able to block you. They're able to humiliate you because you don't know the truth. Mm -hmm. And so he fills your head with lies. So by the time the truth comes in, you you close your ears and become so defensive because you've been manipulated, played with, and lied to for so long. Mm -hmm. And so now when you hear the word of God, you neglect it. Because of the fact that you don't want to admit that I've been played. But it's okay. We've all been played. We've all been deceived. And this is how the enemy gets people to say, I want to kill myself. Because all this time, I wasted time. I've lost great friendships. I pushed people away because I thought that I wasn't worthy. People feeling unworthy. And we're not realizing that society is giving us these rules. But it's not society that's giving us these rules is the enemy that's making us feel that God rules Mm -hmm. are too much are too heavy like they were saying back then in Ezekiel they were saying Lord your your rules are unfair they're not just they're they're unjust and we can't follow them they're Mm -hmm. like impossible but that's a lie that's what the enemy wants you to think because God gives us these rules and these commands to protect us because he loves us and he he doesn't want to hinder your blessing or you walking into the promised land, whatever he has for you. So he tells you, he tells you to wait before marriage to have sex. Why does he tell you that? Because he doesn't want the guy to abandon you or because he doesn't want you to get pregnant out of wedlock and then you're with this baby by yourself or because he doesn't want you to catch STD or, or because he doesn't want you to have to open doors to these demons. Because he knows how severe it gets for you. He doesn't want you to have to have to go through those unnecessary battles like Jonah did when he didn't want, didn't want to go to preach to Nineveh. He put himself through the storm, the belly of the well, and all that stuff. And he didn't have to go through that. And so God doesn't want us to have to go in circles. Just like the people of Israel who was in the wilderness for 40 years going around circles. God doesn't want that for you. He wants you to walk into your promised land. He wants you to be able to fulfill the purpose and the destiny that he has for you. And so that way you can be able to have full control over the life that he has given you. You mentioned something about um, fornication and, you know, when you sleep with someone, all these demons um, come inside of you. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, these demons that, that you open the door to, for instance... Um, let's say if you wanted to get married because you don't know what demons this person have, this could hinder you from getting a full commitment because you cheat yourself. This is what the enemy, this is what the enemy love to do. He wants us to cheat ourselves. And once you cheat yourself, you miss the full picture. And so these demons want to make sure that you don't get married 
that you don't be prosperous because marriage is the same way we have this covenant with God, a commitment with God. Marriage opens doors for a lot of great things. And so the enemy wants you to feel lonely. He wants you to feel like no man is ever going to marry you. And so this is why God says, don't do it. And these demons, they ruin your life. Once you open the door to them, they hold you back. They captivate you. Then you realize that everybody is getting married but you. Then you realize that everybody is living a life that you were also, you was also supposed to live. So you have to be careful in what you allow in because this person could have had a, a, a demon of suicide and then you become suicidal and you don't even know what to do with it. And so you must be careful because there's different type of demons, different type of spirits that you may not understand how to battle and they might even beat you. So this is why you don't do that. Um, I was talking to a student the other day and, and she asked me, she said, Ms. Ramos, if the person is a virgin and when they get married, how are they going to know if that person is doing it right? They're talking about their husband. I said, but if you're a virgin, then you're not going to know what's right or wrong because you never did it before. It's only when you open yourself up to sleeping with people, then you want to do it the way this person, you want your husband to do this, um, you know, some position, and then you want him to do this other stuff. And in other sense, he has to... He has to incorporate all these different men in order to to fulfill what you want him to fulfill. But if you didn't have that experience, then you right. won't know that, right? Mm -hmm. You would just know that you and your husband are, are, are having this sexual encounter, and it's between you and him. But all these other things in the back of your mind, because this one did this to you, that one did this to you. Mm -hmm. So you want your husband or the person you're with to to perform all these feats, and it's not going to happen because you have all these persons inside of you. What's your take on that? Well, I agree with what you say because you have this all these spirits in the inside of you because the spirit takes the pleasure. Those demons, when you feel like, okay, my husband hasn't given me pleasure, it's because the demon get the pleasure. Because you open the door or he opened the doors to all of those demons before. And so you really have to be careful so that way you don't lose pleasure. Mm -hmm. So I think it goes, I think it gets that deep. Yes, I think it gets deeper than that. So, why don't you pray for us? <laughs> okay. I would love to do that. Mm -hmm. um, do you want me to pray anything in particular? I want you to pray for the students, for them for direction, um, for the confusion that's going on in their life, the suicide, the cutting, the burning, the, um, a sense of direction. Let's, let's do that. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for everything that you have done for us. We thank you for your protection, your love, your guidance, for your compassion, and for Jesus, your name. Because when your name is being said, demons fall. Demons flee at the name of Jesus and demons burn at the name of Jesus. And because of this name, you told us in Luke 10 verse 19 that we have authority and that we have dominion over Satan and all of his works through the name of Jesus. And Father, I praise and glorify your name that you have given us this power to say your name. And Lord Jesus, I pray over the spirit of hate, the spirit of envy, the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of deception, spirit of manipulation, spirit of confusion, all of these spirits that are leading to suicide. Father, I bind them in Jesus' mighty name that you send your angels, you said in Psalms 91, that you send your angels to protect and guide us so that whatever the enemy has planned, Lord Jesus, that you send your angels to come out with their sword, to persecute those who persecute us, to chase those who chase us. And Father, I bless and praise your name for giving us guidance and for leading us and that the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of disobedience is all binded in Jesus' mighty name. And that the spirit of rebellion cannot take control over this place because I'm speaking obedience. I'm speaking patience. I'm speaking love. I'm speaking prosperity. And those who are deceived to think that they're supposed to fornicate, to receive love and to receive all these great benefits that you have planned. Father, I rebuke that lie in Jesus' mighty name. 
because it is through obedience and it's, it's through your commands and your statutes that we will be able to have prosperity, that we will be able to receive love, that we'll be able to re, that we'll be able to live through forgiveness through Jesus' mighty name. That we're not doing what we want to do, Lord Jesus, but we're abiding by your laws, your plans, in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, I chain and cage Satan by the neck in Jesus' mighty name, so that whatever he's trying to do, Lord Jesus, he wants us to be a slave. He wants to captivate us. But Jesus, you have given us the authority and the dominion to captivate him and to chain him through your name. And so I plead the blood all over this place, all over the children, those who need to find you father god that they that they that they can't find you because they're struggling lord jesus father god i pray lord jesus that they their ears open their hearts open so that they can come to you and that you can show them that your arms are wide open in jesus mighty name father i pray not only for the students but the administrators lord jesus those who are in administration lord jesus that they can be better examples so that they can help these students find their way through Christ because if they can't receive it at home if they can't receive it through their friends that the administration those who are higher with experience Lord Jesus that they can fill them with wisdom and intelligence and knowledge through the word of God because we cannot receive wisdom and knowledge and intelligence through our own will but it is through our Lord Jesus that we get this intelligence, that we get this wisdom, that we receive salvation, that we know what grace is, that we know what mercy is, that we can walk we can walk in our faith in our faith life the proper way so that the inside of us stays pure that the inside of us are filled with your word that the inside of us are filled with your plan and lord jesus i pray that the students also follow matthew 7 verse 6 that we that we do not give what is holy to the dogs that we do not give our pearls to the swine that we respect ourselves and that we do things without hesitation. It says in 1 John 5 verse 3 that we that we abide by your command without hesitation. For that is the love of God. That we do things without hesitation. We do it willingly. And we serve and worship you through spirit and in truth. Because you are the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. That we're not serving no foreign God. But we're serving the most high God. So whatever we ask for through faith. Through Jesus mighty name that we receive and no weapon form against us shall prosper in jesus mighty name i pray amen father god we pray against any backlash and retaliation against this prayer i just want to say that i am just so proud of you um from the time that you was my student to this time you have involved to, to this amazing woman and oh. your word that knowing Quoting these scriptures without a Bible is just um, is amazing. And I just can't wait for your ministry to come forth and for you to help all the, the help everyone in need of help. Is there anything else that you would like to say before we end this, this session? Um, I don't, I just, you know, would like to say that I'm a little, you know, without words for everything that's going on within this generation but mm -hmm. jesus has warned us already we know that this is supposed to happen mm -hmm. we know that this was supposed to come and christians are not ambushed by this this is mm -hmm. for the people who are ungodly to be in shock mm -hmm. but the godly people who are of christ mm -hmm. we abide by god's word and we know that these things are supposed to happen because the enemy is desperate and I also would like to say that I would like to continue to pray for these students because this mm -hmm. actually made me feel good. That it's not about mm -hmm. me. It's it's more about saving our youth and making sure mm -hmm. that the enemy gets the humiliation that he's trying to bring towards them and their parents. Mm -hmm. So the next time you'll let, we'll go on video instead of having <laughs> an audio? Of course. <laughs> we'll be well prepared for that. 